there's no deterrent. But those who would end affirmative action never call for beefing up civil rights enforcement. Indeed, though his teammates might not know it, Mr. Pell's organization advocates abolishing anti-discrimination law altogether as it regards the private sector. So Joseph can sing the praises of the 1964 Civil Rights Act, but the man sitting next to him would get rid of it as it regards private organization. So to endorse the resolution would only intensify the problem of discrimination. Those who would end affirmative action ignore the study, recent study, which found that job applicants with white sounding names have a 50% greater chance of getting a call back for an interview than those with black sounding names even when qualifications are indistinguishable. They ignore not only that, but the research which has found that eight in 10 jobs are never advertised. Instead, they're filled by networking, a process that mostly excludes people of color and women of all colors and elevates whites and men, not because we are better for certain jobs, but because we know the right people. And if affirmative action were abolished, none of that would change for the better. If anything, it would get worse. The same is true for schooling. Our opponents will rail against so-called preferences for students of color while they ignore the preferences built in for whites. So they condemn the University of Michigan for giving 20 points on a 150 point scale to students of color, but they ignored the points that were in practice essentially for whites only. Like the 16 points you got if you were from the upper peninsula of Michigan. The snow is not the only thing white there. The 10 points just because you went to a top high school, which means your parents lived in the right zip code. The eight points for taking advanced placement classes, which are three times more available in schools serving white kids than schools that serve mostly students of color, or the four points you got if daddy went to Michigan. They rallied behind Jennifer Gratz as the supposed victim of reverse discrimination because the year she was rejected, there were about 85 students of color who got into Michigan despite having lower scores and grades, but they say nothing about the 1,400, let me repeat, 1,400 white students with lower grades and lower scores than Jenny Gratz who got in. You see, less qualified white people are no problem, but less qualified people of color, my goodness, we can't have that. They say nothing about the study from six weeks ago which found that for every one student of color who receives any benefit from affirmative action in college, there are at least two whites for every one person of color, two whites who also didn't meet the requirements, but got in because daddy wrote a check or mama made a phone call.